Hello, I'm Jonathan Miller and welcome to the 15th annual LD Micro main event. I'm here with Cordis Moore, SVP of Marketing for Energy Fuels, ticker symbol UUUU. Curtis, thank you so much for being here with us today. Will you please tell our viewers a little bit more about the company? Absolutely, and thank you for having me, Jonathan. Absolutely. So Energy Fuels has emerged as the leading producer of critical minerals and criti uh, critical materials in the United States. Historically, we've been a uranium miner. Uh, we've been the largest uh, producer of uranium in the United States for the last several years. And of course, there's a great story to be told on, the, on uranium right now. Um, however, we've been able to expand our capabilities into some other critical materials, namely rare earth elements, which is a, a huge issue right now, uh, especially for electric vehicles and the growth uh, that, that, that's uh, uh, coming from electric vehicles. And actually right now, Energy Fuels has expanded our capabilities to be producing the most advanced rare earth material being produced in the United States today. So not only are we uh, ramping up uranium production uh, to, uh, in, into increased markets, but we're also producing rare earth elements right now. Wow. So what about the company inspires you the most? You know, I think it's just the ability for us to, uh, to, to be producing these raw materials and these critical materials that are needed for the clean energy revolution. Uh, of course, uranium is the fuel for nuclear energy. And right now, countries around the world are turning to nuclear, not only because it's a reliable source of energy, but also because it has, is, because it has no carbon emissions. It's clean. It's clean, absolutely. And then you uh, turn to rare earth elements. And uh, right now, the United States is, uh, is, is very dependent. Actually, the world is very dependent on China right now, yep. uh, but, but uh, major auto manufacturers around the world and consumer demand is moving toward electrification and electric vehicles. I mean, when you have major auto manufacturers saying they're going to be 100% electric by, by a certain date or 80% electric, that's going to take a lot of rare earth elements. Mm -hmm. And right now, the United States isn't really producing any advanced rare earth materials. Wow. And so uh, we have these unique capabilities at our uh, White Mesa Mill, which is in Southeast Utah, uh, to be able to uh, basically fulfill the middle of the rare earth supply chain. Wow. We're probably not going to be producing rare earth magnets, which is what rare earths are used for in electric vehicles. Yeah, it provides nice. the power. Um, yeah. However, we can produce, uh, we can do the crack and leach, we can do the separation, and possibly do the metals and alloys. So it's, it, I mean, honestly, I've never been more excited about this company, and I've been with them for 15 years. Wow. And it sounds like you're touching on it already a little bit, but what are some of the greatest strengths? Uh, of our company. So it really boils down to two things. Okay. We, uh, number one, have the ability to deal with uh, uranium and thorium and other radionuclides that are associated with all the, a lot of these critical materials. Of course, uranium is radioactive and it's, need, it's used for the production of clean nuclear energy. However, most major rare earth bearing minerals, when they come out of the ground, they're also radioactive. They have naturally occurring uranium and thorium that have to be removed or monetized or, or otherwise dealt with. Well, we have those capabilities. We have the licenses, we have the capabilities, we have the expertise to do that because we've been doing it for 40 years. And so that's really been one of the major roadblocks for a lot of rare earth companies is how to deal with the radionuclides. And especially when it comes to this one particular mi mineral that we're dealing with called monazite. It's very high in the ND and the PR um, and also the DY and the TB, that's neodymium, praseodymium, dysprosium, terbium, uh, that are needed in these rare earth uh, magnets used in electric vehicles. Monazite is also higher in uranium and thorium. And so for most people, it's a big problem. Honestly, for us, it's a value add. So that's one of our uh, unique capabilities and value adds. But also it's our ability to perform what's called solvent extraction processing. So the White Mesa Mill has been producing uranium and, and vanadium oxides with solvent extraction for 40 years. Well, it turns out that the proven method for producing separated rare earth oxides is also solvent extra extraction. It's the same principles. And so we're moving very quickly to actually producing separated rare earth oxides, possibly in the next year or so, um, at a commercial scale. And so it's an extremely exciting time for us right now. It sounds like you're already overcoming some of the obstacles that are, are facing the industry. Are yeah. there, is there anything else you would focus on that would be an immediate issue as far as performance? Yeah, I mean, right now we're trying to get more of this monazite mineral. Um, that, that's been a, you know, that, that's, that's I'd say one of our biggest hurdles that we need to overcome right now. Uh, right now we're getting monazite from a, from, a, from a sand mining operation in the state of Georgia owned by uh, Camores, uh, spin off of DuPont. But there's, uh, monazite is mined all over the world at heavy mineral sand operations. These are mines where they basically mine beach sand or formerly beach sands uh, for heavy minerals like titanium and zirconium minerals. But this monazite occurs right alongside it. And so previously it was a waste. Uh, but just but recently, monazite has become extremely valuable for those reasons. And so right now we're in discussions with uh, heavy mineral sand operators all over the world to have them supply our, uh, our, our, our initiative. Really, the, the mining of rare earths is not the pinch point. 
honestly, it's the it's the downstream processing of high value products, and that's uh, that's what we're looking to fulfill right now at Energy Fuels. That's great. And uh, what would you say about your human capital in the business? How important is that? Oh, absolutely. And and, and honestly, with the way things are going in both the uh, uranium and the rare earth industry, finding finding people is difficult right now yeah, because absolutely. there's a lot of growth, particularly in the United States, for these things. But we've got a great core group. Uh, at Energy Fuels, uh, a proven record of performance and innovation. I mean, really to go from barely knowing what a rare earth was three years ago to producing the most advanced rare earth material in the United States today, I think is a real testament to the kind of people that we have at this company and the kind of people we attract. No, it's definitely a great achievement. Are there any new products on the horizon that we should keep an eye out for? Absolutely. So right now, um, uh, we're, we are the largest producer of uranium oxides in the United States. Uh, we're ramping up production. So uh, you're going to see uh, us selling uranium. Uh, uh, into some new contracts that we've been able to, sec to secure uh, with some uh, domestic nuclear utilities. Um, we're producing kind of an intermediate rare earth product right now. It's called a mixed rare earth carbonate. But hopefully in the next 12 to 18 months, we're going to be um, producing commercial quantities of NDPR oxide, uh, which is uh, the light rare earths that are uh, uh, used in uh, EV uh, uh, motors, uh, sorry, magnets used in EV motors. Mm -hmm. um, it's possible we get back into vanadium production. We're kind of a swing producer of vanadium, which is another critical element. Um, we just, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're producing a lot of exciting things. And then one other thing that's, that's, probably down the road would be medical isotopes. Um, there's there's certain elements that are needed for some emerging cancer treatments, honestly, and these these elements are in our process streams. And so we're looking at the uh, potential to actually recover those, which could be another very high value uh, proposition for us. It's just really, if there's anything that is naturally radioactive, we can deal with it. And so that, and if there's products that come off of you know feeds that are naturally radioactive, we, we're, we can look at it and we can actually monetize that stuff. That's great. And yep. then obviously the Russia-Ukraine conflict has kind of thrown a wrench in, in nuclear and uranium mining. Uh, what is the company doing to overcome that? Well, actually, it's been a benefit for us. You know, the United States has been extremely dependent on Russia and its allies for uranium. I think right now we're getting almost 60 percent of our uranium that are used in U.S. nuclear power plants are coming from Russia, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. Oh. 20 or 25 percent of our enriched uranium is coming directly from Russia. And uh, what we're seeing is domestic utilities are volunteering voluntarily trying to move away from Russia for, for obvious reasons. Now, they can't cut it off immediately because, I mean, honestly, I've heard we might have blackouts if we cut off Russian supply. However, they don't want to be associated with that anymore. And so they're seeking out companies like us who can provide them with a nice, reliable, domestic, secure supply of uranium to operate their plants. And their, their plants are, are, are much healthier right now because uh, the Biden administration, there's been a lot of bipartisan support for domestic nuclear power plants. And uh, these plants that were under financial distress until just a, a couple of years ago, now have a, a, a have gotten a lifeline, and so they have a uh, you know we expect those to be able to operate for many decades, you know into the future, uh, and, uh, and and be profitable, and uh, and buying our uranium. That's fantastic. So I'm sure that plays into where you see the company going in the next five years. Absolutely. Is there anything else you would add on to that? No, I think that that's it. Uh, we're, we plan to be a major uh, supplier of uranium to domestic nuclear power plants. And we also plan to uh, uh, fulfill the middle of the rare earth supply chain, if not if not more. So uh, the, the future has never been brighter for energy fuels. Congratulations. Sounds very uh, impressive, the work you've been doing. Is there anything else you'd like to highlight for investors before closing out? Nope. I think I think we covered it. Thank you very much. Again, thank you for coming, Curtis. We really appreciate you